welcome to another tutorial. My name is Tammy Bagshi, and this time we're going to be going over, well, the impact of overfitting your neural networks. But just before I get into the actual topic of this video today, uh, I'd actually like to say that uh, just a few days ago, in fact, I was actually in Arkansas at the David Glass Technology Center, uh, of course, Walmart's, I guess you could say, Walmart Technology Headquarters. And I was actually giving a keynote to a few hundred, maybe even around 300, 400 uh, developers at Walmart. Uh, and so, of course, I was giving a keynote showing around three demos of my neural network projects uh, when I actually went through the last demo, my tic-tac-toe demo, uh, where I showed them how I created a tic-tac-toe AI using a neural network, which that video will be out soon as well. But basically what happened is while I was demoing that uh, application, I talked about how this neural network achieves just around a 99% accuracy and will hardly ever lose and will almost never ever lose. Uh, and so one of the, basically one of the people that was one of the developers that was watching online uh, on my, for the in internal Walmart WebEx, uh, they asked me a question on Slack uh, and they said, why doesn't it reach 100% accuracy? Why is that not possible? Uh, like, does it inherit the human trait of making mistakes? And that's what I'm here to answer today. And that's why I'm here to tell you that no, it doesn't necessarily implement the human trait of making mistakes. You could technically hard code a neural network to do pretty much anything. You could get it so close, like get the error rate so little that there would be pretty much no point in thinking that it's not exactly the same as let's say a function. Uh, however, what I'm here to tell you about today is why overfitting neural networks is never a good idea. So let's actually begin with a little bit of terminology. Now let's just say that we've got our tic-tac-toe neural network. Uh, and so we've got a little graph here. Uh, and so let's just say that this is our training iterations graph. Okay, so as we go along on this y axis, sorry, this x axis over here, what's going to happen is we're going to say that this is an epoch. Epoch, sorry. So, what's going to happen is every single time our graph progresses in the x direction, from left to right, we're increasing an epoch. But every time it increases from bottom to top on the y axis, we are increasing accuracy. Now with most neural network training graphs, uh, you don't put accuracy on this uh, axis, you put error rate. Uh, and so the, down, the more you know, down this gets over time, the better, because the less of the error rate. But I'm basically inversing that. I'm saying the higher this goes, the better, because the higher the accuracy. Uh, and so that's basically what this graph contains. It contains the accuracy of this neural network over many epochs. And so let's just say this is our uh, tic-tac-toe neural network. I'm taking my red marker over here. Uh, let's just say we're going to start from here, okay? So a very, very low accuracy. But over time, over a few epochs, what happens is see that the training set accuracy goes higher and higher and higher over time. And so basically, we're, we, and then we start to you know, stall over here a little bit, where we're not really seeing much of an increase over here. Uh, and so basically, it's not, it's basically reached that limit, where it's, it's hard to increase the accuracy over here. Uh, and so this is at uh, one of our last epochs that we recorded. Uh, and so, now another thing I'd like to say here, is that this red marker, signifies the training set of this neural network. Okay, our training set. But now what I'm going to tell you is let's just say we were also to plot out the accuracy of not just our training set, but our test set as well. As it's very commonly said in the neural networks world, you should always have a test set. And so let's just say we were to graph out our test set accuracy as well. So we've got this as our training set accuracy, but now let's take a look as our, at our test set, which is something the neural network has not been trained on. Now, again, these are just theoretical values, but this is usually how stuff goes on with neural networks. So we start off exactly almost at the training set accuracy. Sometimes it's a little different. And we, of course, start to go up it with this, and then we slowly start to 
sink. So what's happening here? Now this might seem a little weird, but let me explain. What's happening is just like a human. If you were to tell a human over and over again to do the same thing, what happens is this neural network after this point here, after this very point, the neural network will stop generalizing the data. It'll stop understanding the patterns in this data. And what it'll do is it'll hard code itself. It'll memorize, not generalize, this training data. So what's happening is while the training data accuracy is just shooting up, the test set accuracy is just sky just absolutely failing, just jumping right out of the sky. And so what's happening here is just completely crashing. And so what happens is that's an, that's an entire separate topic in neural networks, generalization versus memorization, which is in fact why deep neural networks exist. They are extremely good at generalizing data and not memorizing them, whereas shallow neural networks might be better at memorizing your data rather than generalizing them like this. In fact, that's why deep neural networks are so much harder to train than shallow neural networks. Uh, and so another thing I'd like to say here is that if you were to take a look after this point, and because of this as well, after this, I guess you could say line here, we start to do something called overfitting. Okay, so overfitting basically means that we are fitting this neural network model too much to our training data to the point where it's memorizing the training data. There is absolutely no point for us to actually train our neural network if it's after this point. And so basically that's actually where the early stopping algorithm comes in. And the early stopping algorithm is basically this extension to backpropagation where you actually plot out these lines and you see, okay, which point did we see our peak in the test set accuracy? Because if you think about it, the test set accuracy is the only thing that matters to us. If the training set accuracy high is, is high, that's great. That might be really good. That might be a good sign. Maybe the test set accuracy is up. But the thing is, your neural network could technically, theoretically, also be memorizing that training data. But the test set data, it has not been trained on, and in fact, it has never been exposed to in terms of backpropagation. So we know that it's not just memorizing this test data. So as long as this test data's accuracy is just going up and up and its error rate is going down and down, we know that our neural network is not memorizing, it's generalizing, because it's still finding the patterns in that data. So right as we're done training our neural network and we find that peak in the test set data, that's the only place we can stop our neural network from training uh, in order to actually get a good result, which is something that we desire. In fact, another thing uh, that's, uh, that uh, can also be called overfitting in, in a neural network isn't just when you have this peak and then it slightly, go, slightly goes down. It's basically like this mountain over here, uh, like a little wave here. But there's another, uh, I guess you could say, part of uh, I guess you, uh, the overfitting. And so this other, uh, I guess you could say, bubble of overfitting is when your test set accuracy never gets off the ground. You're giving your neural network either too little or too much data, or data that doesn't really have patterns at all. And so what's happening is your neural network is not finding patterns at all. What's happening is it's just memorizing those inputs and outputs and your test set accuracy is either staying the same, just stalling, or it's falling down, uh, or it's just not going high. Uh, and so those uh, two explanations would really be what overfitting is in neural networks. And that's exactly what the early stopping algorithm will help you to achieve uh, and of course to help you to prevent uh, by finding that peak in the neural network test set accuracy and chopping your training there, stopping it, and of course just using that neural network. And if you don't receive your desired accuracy like we did here, then you can of course train your neural network with a different set of neurons or different types of neurons, uh, really whatever you can in order to increase the accuracy. 
Now that was a pretty short video, but I really do want to, of course, explain this in a bit more depth as to how you can prevent this type of, I guess you could say, stalling in terms of accuracy. And so, in just a little while, maybe a few weeks uh, soon though, I will release another video uh, as to how you can actually implement this, uh, maybe with some APIs in Java, or maybe a custom implement implementation. We'll see about that, but... That's going to be it for this video today. So of course, I really hope you enjoyed, and if you did, please leave a like down below. If you think this could help anybody else, and maybe if it even helped you, uh, you can share the video as well. Uh, that would really help me out. Uh, of course, if you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback, please do feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Email them to me at tajimani at gmail.com, or tweet them to me at tajimani. Of course, if you really like my content though, and you want to see a lot more of it, please do consider subscribing to my channel as well, as it really does help out a lot. Alright then, thank you very much, that's going to be it for this tutorial today. Goodbye.